the way I see it, we have four or five more videos to get through to put it in a good spot for the start of next school year. It should be around May 20th. Today we're talking about solving equations using square root. It's not a particularly demanding lesson. Um, video number one is the most important one. Video number two is good information and relates this to functions. If you are in a time crunch and you don't see all of video number two, it will not be the end of the world. I shouldn't have just said that. Just watch it. Um, first off, what is a quadratic equation? Well, a quadratic has a degree of two. So these are equations that include a highest degree, a.k.a. exponent, of 2. You know, so that could be x squared, or 3m squared, or negative 5p uh, squared. That would be the highest degree term. <clears throat> so here is a quadratic equation. Highest degree in the whole equation is 2. So the question really is, what values of x make this true? What values of x would make this true? So what can we square to get 9? Well, the obvious one is 3. We know that 3 times 3 gives us 9. So x equals 3. Or what else could we square to get 9? What else can we multiply by itself to get 9? Negative 3. Now, if we were in the classroom, I'd make you struggle with that a little bit more. But negative 3 times negative 3 gives us 9. So x is either 3 or x is negative 3. Another way that we can write this is plus or minus 3. So you can either write it this way or you can write it this way. Um, now what are the zeros of a function, also known as the roots of an equation? These are the values. of x that give us y equal to 0. I mean, they're called zeros. So that's where that comes from, because it gives us a y value equal to 0. The x values that give us a y equal to 0. And if you remember, when y is equal to 0, we also have the x-intercepts. So how is it that we're going to solve equations using square root? The first thing that we need to do is isolate the variable squared part. We need to isolate the x squared. So in this problem right here, I wish I had made this bigger. Hindsight is amazing. So that right there, we need to get by itself. This really is like solving 3x minus 5 equals 55. We would add 5 and then divide by 3. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add 5 and divide by 3. That was my daughter calling. Probably fighting. 3x squared equal to 55 plus 5 is 60. And then we will divide by 3. And we get x squared. She's persistent. x squared equals 20. OK, now. Second step, first just solve it, get the x squared by itself. Solve it for the x squared piece. We want to undo the squaring by taking the square root of both sides. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. But we need to remember, just like what happened up here, that we will have plus or minus because the positive version squared and the negative version squared would both give us um, a positive number. So x in this case is equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. Next step. If it's an application problem, just break out your calculator and square root the 20. If it's not an application problem, take this right here. Well, actually, let me show you. I'm going to write this down. If it's an application problem, take this plus or minus the square root of 20. Take your calculator, handy dandy calculator, and square root the 20. And what do you get? 4.47213595. Let's go with 
So plus or minus 4.47. Make sure you round correctly. <clears throat> and if it's not an application, then we want to go ahead and simplify the square root. So we've got plus or minus the square root of 20. This was the last lesson that you did. What's the biggest perfect square that divides 20? It's 4. And what's the square root of 4? It is 2. So that is our answer. It's important to be able to do this. You will use this quite a bit in geometry with special right triangles, um, Pythagorean theorem, and other things. So for this right here, we have x squared. Right there, we need to get that by itself first, so we're going to divide both sides by 3. And x squared gives us 48 divided by 3 is 16. Now that we have this like this, we're going to square root both sides, but don't forget you want the positive and negative version of that. So that would be x, the squaring and the square root cancel. The squaring and the square root undo each other. They are inverses. Plus or minus, well, the square root of 16 is 4. So we're done. On this one right here, we want to isolate the x squared. So what's the first step? We're going to subtract 4. x squared then is equal to 14. Now, the second step is to undo the squaring by taking the square root, because the squaring and square root cancel. And then we're going to square root the 14. Don't forget the plus or minus. Lots of kids do. Don't let you be that person. So we now have x equals plus or minus the square root of 14. Um, there is no perfect square root that divides 14, so it can't be simplified anymore. So that's the final answer. For this one right here, we want to get the x squared by itself. So we are going to add 23, and that leaves us with 6x squared equals, let's see here, 9 plus 3 is 12, carry the 1, 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7, 72. Okay, we still want that x squared by itself, so now we are going to divide by 6, and that leaves us with x squared equals um, 72 divided by 6 is... 12. <clears throat> now we need to undo the squaring. So we are going to square root, because square root and squaring cancel each other out, leaving us with just an x. But we have to do the same thing to the other side, but don't forget, we want the positive and the negative version, because the negative number squared still gives us a positive. So that is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. Now this one does have a perfect square that divides it. And that perfect square is 4. 4 times 3. Again, this is from yesterday's lesson. And then the square root of 4 is 2. The end of the first part of this lesson. Good luck.